Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. This time out, an overview of the new features in Avid's Pro Tools 12.3. Let's get started. Avid's Pro Tools 12.3 introduces a number of really cool new features, so today I'm going to give you a quick overview of those features and how you might use them in your studio. Perhaps the biggest addition to Pro Tools 12.3 is the new commit function. Commit allows you to render audio, to render inserted plugins, to render virtual instruments to new audio tracks while preserving all the settings that are on the original tracks. It's a very cool function that has a lot of applications. So at its most basic, we can use commit almost like a bounce function to basically render audio to a new track. Let's take a look at how that works. I've got a session opened up in Pro Tools 12.3 and I've set up a number of different memory locations that allow me to show you these different examples. So let's pop over to our edit window and we're going to look at this drum track first. So right here I've got my D112 and you can see that we have a number of different edits going on here at the beginning. We've got a bunch of different regions and we can very easily use the commit functions to consolidate all those regions. If we right click on that and pull down to commit, a window opens up. Now we have a number of different options here. We can commit the selected tracks, which in this case is our kick D112, or we can also commit the edit selection, which would be just the area that we've selected within the track. I'm going to do the whole track. We can consolidate all these independent clips into a new clip on the new track. We can choose to render automation, whether volume and mute or pan. In this case, I don't need to. And we can also copy sends and group assignments. So that means that whatever sends and group assignments we have on this original track, as far as our mixer goes, they'll be created on the new track as well. And then we're going to choose to insert that track after the track that we've selected. Now with the source track that's left over after we've rendered our new track, we can choose to do nothing, we can delete that track, we can make it inactive, or we can hide it and make it inactive. I'm going to leave it at do nothing right now. We'll choose to do this offline. When we click OK, Pro Tools will create a new track and consolidate all of these regions into a new clip. So let's do that. Pro Tools creates the new track, and here's our rendered audio. Now we could, let's go ahead and delete that track. If we select this again, go to commit, and we choose to hide and make inactive, it will remove the original track from our list. So here's our new track that Pro Tools created, and our original source track has been hidden and made inactive. If you have plugins on a track, you can choose to commit with those plugins active as part of the rendered audio. And if you have multiple plugins, you can choose which of those plugins are being rendered into the audio. So for example, in this case, if we right click on the distortion plugin, pull down to commit up to this insert, now at this point, Pro Tools will create a new track and render the audio with this distortion plugin active. If we cancel that, if we come down here and click on channel strip, commit up to this insert, now Pro Tools will create a new track, render our audio, and apply the distortion, enhancer, and channel strip plugins. This is great for sending your tracks off for mixes without including the plugins, or for archiving your tracks that have been fully processed using your plugins. If you're using virtual instruments, you can also use commit to render those to new audio tracks. Let's take a look at how that works. In this case, I'm using the Boom plugin to create a track of hand claps. My MIDI data is here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. There's two different ways we can use the commit function to create an audio track from this virtual instrument. First of all, we can simply right click, choose to commit, have it create consolidated tracks, insert after this, hide and make inactive. Actually, I'm going to have it do nothing so that track will remain there. New track is created with our audio version of those hand claps. The second way we can use the commit function is simply drag and drop our MIDI regions to create new audio regions. This is a very fast and easy way to render your virtual instrument tracks to new audio tracks whether you're mixing down or archiving for future use. And in fact, we're not limited to just mono or stereo outputs. If you have an instrument that has multiple outputs, you can commit those simultaneously as well. Let's take a look at that. So in this case, I've got Superior Drummer from TuneTrack loaded in, and I've got multiple outputs feeding from the plugin into several different tracks inside of Pro Tools. I've got a separate output for my kick drum, for my snare, my hi-hat, my toms, and so on. We can easily commit this in one step. We'll simply come over here, right-click on our track, pull down to commit, say yes. There we go. So what you see here on the left-hand side are our original tracks. We've got our superior drummer track and then the multiple outputs. Here on the right-hand side, the tracks that are labeled with the .cm, those are our new rendered tracks. One thing to notice here is that we had sends in our original tracks, and those sends were feeding into two different reverb setups, one for a plate and one for a drum room. 
Notice that when we committed our original tracks, those sends were copied over to the new rendered tracks, and they're active and will have exactly the same mix that we had before. In the same fashion, if you're working with stems, you can commit those stems to new audio tracks as well. Simply right-click on the particular track, choose Commit, and you're ready to go. So our new stem shows up rendered right here next to the original track. And again, we could have chosen when we committed this to hide that track, to make it inactive, or to delete it completely. The same way that we commit stems, we could also choose to commit our complete mix if we wanted to. So that's a very easy way to bounce down to a new rendered track. Another great new function in Pro Tools 12.3 is a new batch fade function. Fades have really been upgraded with Pro Tools 12.3. Let's take a look at that. If you've done much drum editing, then a screen like this will look very familiar to you. Lots and lots of regions, and all of them need fades. Now you could create those fades fairly quickly in earlier versions of Pro Tools, but with 12.3 and the new batch fade functions, it's even faster. So we'll hit Command F, open up our fade screen, and here we can look at our fade ins, our fade outs, and our cross fades, and we also have additional versatility for configuring those fades. So we can do our standard fade, and we can adjust that by simply pulling on the curve, we can do our S curve, and again, we can adjust that by pulling on it, or we have a variety of different preset curve shapes. So we'll leave that on standard. We can set that to equal power or equal gain, and the same thing on our fade outs. So we've got our slope here, we've got our different variations, and we can adjust those as we like. We also now have fade in operation and fade out operation selections. So we can create new fade ins, adjust a fade in shape and slope, adjust existing fades and length, set the length for those fade ins. So we have versatility for doing that as well. In the center section, we can work with our cross fades. Now we can set these up with the different shapes, standard, S-curve. We could also work with the different fade-ins, fade-outs, and so on. We can unlink those so we can work with them individually. So we can set up an S-curve here. We could set up a uh, different curve here on the out. So we have, again, all that flexibility that we're used to having with Pro Tools. We also can use the crossfade operation functions to set up the way the crossfades work, create new crossfades, adjust existing crossfade lengths, and so on. And we can set the placement for those fades, pre-splice, post-splice, or centered. So now with one click of the OK button, we can create all the fades we need on our drum edits. And we're done. The other handy thing with the new batch fade window is we can set up five different presets for fades that we use all the time. Or in fact, there are also factory presets that we can use for creating only cross fades, only fade ins, only fade outs, only new fades. So all of those settings can be saved as presets and very quickly recalled. This is a very handy, very fast way to work with fades in Pro Tools 12.3. The last new feature I'm going to show you in Pro Tools 12.3 is clip transparency. In previous versions of Pro Tools, when you moved a clip, it basically blocked out a clip that was underneath it. With clip transparency, you can still see what's going on, which makes it very handy for placing regions and clips. So if we take this clip and move it on top of the clip above, you can see that we can still see the clip underneath. This allows us to very accurately place it as well as see exactly what we're doing as we're moving that clip around. I hope you've enjoyed this look at some of the new features in Pro Tools 12.3. It really is a great upgrade to Pro Tools. Pro Tools 12 has been wonderful, and this makes it even better. Thanks for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. I'm Mitch Gallagher.